welcome to our next digital lunchbox. As a reminder, we do these every Tuesday and Friday from 12 to 12.30. Today, I am joined by 08 team members, Megan and Tyler, and 08 CEO and founder, Seth. And we're gonna be talking about Drupal, all things Drupal, Drupal 7, 8, 9, the migration process. It's pretty technical, but we're gonna to try to break it down for you guys so that you kind of know what to expect. But I guess first things first, um, Tyler, what is Drupal? Uh, well, Drupal is a content management system. Uh, that means that it will uh, serve content on your website. Um, with Starting with Drupal 8, it can also be used as what's called a headless CMS, uh, where that kind of acts as a hub that can send out data to your website, your mobile app, maybe a calendaring event, some digital signage. Um, so it's, it's a really flexible, uh, extensible content management system. Awesome. So I know we work a lot with Drupal here at 08 and we get a ton of questions, um, especially now that people are having to migrate because Drupal 7 is approaching its end of life. So I think that this will be kind of something, a question that all three of you can contribute to. But uh, Seth, do you want to start out and kind of tell me about the evolution of Drupal 7 to 8 to 9 and any expanded functionality? Yeah, well, one important thing to highlight right off the bat is that uh, these are major upgrades from six to seven and seven to eight, but going forward from eight on, it, it will be almost as significant or insignificant as a minor version upgrade. So, you know, the pain that people have experienced, and that was so that we could innovate, right, from Drupal seven to eight, but, you know, from eight to nine, it's gonna be much smoother. You won't have to rebuild. It's gonna be, um, you know, a much lighter process. What do other people have to contribute? Megan, do you want to add to that? What are you seeing as changes in the new Drupal version? Well, there's also been a huge evolution in user experience for admins, and it's become a really big focus of the core development team. And there's always a big push to improve the, the user experience for content admins and site builders. Another thing I would add is that um, the way we build web pages has really evolved a lot since Drupal 7 was released in 2011. So that's a long time, a long lot of changes in the way we do things and improvements. So that's something that might affect what the migration path might look like for a particular site. Tyler, do you have anything to add? Um, no, it's, it's really just, yeah, been a lot of really evolutionary modifications and enhancements. Um, the, the big thing to keep in mind with like from Drupal eight to nine is it's going to be just a lot of really backend things that most users aren't going to see. Um, lots of dependencies are end of lifing. And so this is really just kind of making sure that the guts of what make Drupal go. Uh, are getting kind of up to date and realigned with the next version of those core technologies that underlie the, the CMS itself. So users shouldn't have to, you know, you, you, you won't have to plan within your organization for lots of retraining, um, you know, because the UI on the admin side is going to change or stuff like that. It's going to be a pretty seamless experience for, for most users. Developers, uh, there will be some some changes, um, but you know, for end users, content contributors, site builder roles, those things should be remaining pretty much the same. Yeah, and, and it's uh, I think it's just important to highlight, the, you know, this is where all the innovation is going. Yeah. Talk about the evolution of Drupal seven, eight, nine, the community shifts, all of its evolution, all of its efforts to the the latest and greatest version of Drupal. So, you know, if there was some thing you didn't like about seven, there chances are it's already fixed in eight and, you know, will be even further enhanced in nine or done a different way, more, more performant way. Um, and, you know, things like performance, usability, uh, all, all these things are being worked on you know, as Drupal grows and evolves over time. You keep mentioning end of life, so that sounds sounds a little scary. 
What are the risks? Are, um, if I choose to keep my website on Drupal 7, Drupal 6, or God forbid something even earlier, what are the risks there? <laughs> It, it's it's one of those things where um, you know the the function the functionality that you rely on, especially with contributed modules, is going to start to um, most likely break down, and the cost to maintain those older websites is going to go like this over time, just because you're having to keep up with really managing your own security patches, managing your own bug fixes. Uh, a lot of the benefit of moving to an open source uh, based content management system where you've got the community working on those things. Uh, it's it's going to be you're going to see a diminishing return on, on those types of things. So um, you'll see bugs, you'll see security flaws, um, potentially compromised or exploited sites. So it's really important to make sure that minimally if you're going to stay on an older version that you're um, maintaining things from a security perspective. Uh, so that you don't end up with a hacked site and then potentially compromised user data or payment data, things like that. Yeah, that makes sense. And it, it sounds like it's a pretty heavy lift though, this, this next migration, at least from seven to eight. So what does that process look like? What does that really entail? Yeah, that process from uh, six, to, six to eight or seven to eight, um, is a definite upgrade. So that looks like essentially creating an empty new Drupal 8 site uh, and then migrating all of the content and the configuration and the frameworks over to the new uh, and making it fit within the new uh, ways that Drupal 8 does things. Megan, do you have any insights that you want to share on that migration process with us? Yes, one of the big changes between Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 is a huge change in the way we do the theme, the front end implementation of the site. So it's a great idea to time this migration if you're planning a big design refresh. This is a great time to align that because the way your design is implemented has to be really radically changed. Yeah, so it, it makes sense. That's a great point. If you're having to redo the technical way that the, the design is being done anyways, you're making that investment, you might as well do the refresh at the same time. Yeah, and what I've seen is that a lot of sites that were developed on Drupal 7 years ago, often the responsive design isn't very good. The mobile implementation is kind of rough or kind of hacked in on top of maybe an old not responsive layout. So it's a great time to really improve your, your responsive design as well. Yeah, and that'll, that changes like that will likely have an, a positive impact on user experience, mm -hmm. but also on performance. Yeah. Um, you know, you're not relying on all those JavaScript frameworks to try and manipulate that and retrofit that old design into mm -hmm. a mobile viewport. So, yeah, super. Absolutely. And a lot of these, you know, sites that have been around for three, four, five, six years, uh, you know, they, the design patterns of the web itself have shifted. Uh, you know, you've probably accumulated a lot of content and it's maybe gotten disorganized. You know, there are a lot of things have, have changed or, you know, there are a lot of opportunities that have, that have emerged to improve what you already have. It's not a, a Drupal specific problem, but I think it's worth mentioning, you know, like, yeah, we have to upgrade to the next version of Drupal and it'll be easier from here on out, but it's also a really great opportunity to, you know, clean house and improve your overall user experience, your conversions, whatever it is that you're seeking to improve. Megan, um, you talked about the, the theme and the changes with Twig from six to eight or seven to eight. What about eight to nine? Are there any changes that you know, users are going to have to be thinking about from their front end, like the actual site that their end visitors, their end users would see, or is that going to be pretty seamless for us? It should be very seamless. We haven't done it yet, so we'll find out when it happens. But um, from what I understand, there's no changes to the way Twig is implemented or no significant changes to anything that's commonly used. So it should just work. That's really exciting. <laughs> We haven't done it yet. So it sounds like Drupal 9 is not quite here yet. The beta was released in March. When can we expect Drupal 9 to be here, be ready? June 3rd is the scheduled release date. Uh, 
you know, and that's that's 1.0 or, or, you know, 9.0. <clears throat> you might want to wait a couple minor versions after that. That's that's the, you know, the, the public release candidate. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the date we're tracking. Right now is a, a great time, though, for anyone, especially like developers and site builder roles to be spinning up, um, you know, on maybe one of Aquia or Pantheon's free accounts, a a test site in Drupal 9 in that beta version, just to, you know, check it out, uh, you know, take a look at the guts and see what's going to be changing and start making those plans where if you do have something that is going to need to be realigned a little bit, that you can do that. Um, again, it, it should be a smooth process, uh, but this being the first big, um, big change like this, you know, it's always good to take a little bit more cautious approach. Um, and, and be, be planful in that leading up to that migration. Speaking of being planful, is there anything else an organization should be doing right now? I know you mentioned maybe you can brainstorm uh, pairing this migration with a complete site redesign, but what about site audits? You know, should we be looking at our content? What happens to our content? Is there anything else we can do? I think you know, the, the migration from six to eight or seven to eight, that's a great opportunity to do that. Um, from eight to nine, really, you know, there's not going to be that big like, okay, we're going to have to create this new site and manu manually or programmatically migrate things over. It's just going to kind of be a click the button and everything should theoretically update and work for you. Um, that's not to say that there aren't things that users uh, can't be doing now to prepare for Drupal 9. Um, so one of the things that you want to check and make sure is that your hosting environment is capable of, you know, meeting the minimum requirements for Drupal 9. Uh, go and check out on Drupal.org uh, those requirements. Most hosts like Pantheon or Acquia that we work with, uh, they're definitely going to be ready for that. Um, but if you're hosting, you know, if you have your own environment that you're managing, definitely make sure that you're, you're thinking ahead on the the DevOps side of things that you're going to be ready. Um, and then taking a look at your contributed modules uh, and making sure that any contributed or custom modules uh, are going to be realigning with those, those new dependencies uh, that are going to be changing in Drupal 9. And then running through, um, you know, the upgrade tools that are available out there just to be sure that, you know, if there are going to be any flags that come up, uh, you can identify those early using those tools. And then that gives you lots of time uh, to address any, any issues or concerns that might, might come up through that type of process. <clears throat> so what if any of my existing features or modules are not going to work with the new Drupal? What can I do? That's where you want to have someone like Megan on your team or <laughs> get in touch with us. Um, Megan, do you have any insights there? Well, if it's an eight to nine issue, I notice a lot of modules on Drupal.org uh, have a status of Drupal 9 on the module page. If that's not there or it's not updated, you can ask the developer of that module. You can get your developer to contribute code to upgrade it to Drupal 9. It's a bunch of options there. The seven to eight migration is a lot more complicated because there might be a completely different way of doing that now. So you want to work with developers like us here at Originate who can figure out, well, what's the new way of doing that? And how do we get from where you were before to where this, what this looks like in Drupal 8 and Drupal 9? Something like Leo Builder is a great example. So Leo Builder was probably been with us for maybe a year now. It's getting more and more robust and a lot more contributed modules that make it even better to work with. But formerly that would have done been done maybe with something called paragraphs or something called panels. So migrating that over is is more of a, a thing that needs some work. Yeah, and a lot of these, you know, eight to nine modules, it can be as simple as just one function call that needs mm -hmm. to be placed. You know, that's yeah. the difference we're looking at. Uh, some might be a little bit more complex, but generally it's, it's, it could be that simple or it just declaring the module as you know, yeah. uh, ready for Drupal 9. Yeah. yeah, and developers in an IDE will have a plugin that can say detect depreciated functions and help find out what this has been replaced with and how you do this yep. in Drupal 9. Are there any other challenges that I might come across 
looking at my older version of Drupal, um, you know, do I have to be concerned if third party software is going to break during a migration or anything like that? Yeah, that's something that we commonly see is uh, folks are leveraging um, lots of integrations these days. Uh, looking at Drupal, Drupal 8 and its API uh, forward approach really makes a lot of those um, cross-platform uh, or cross-service integrations a lot easier. Um, but if you are relying on some dated integrations with your six or seven site, those may need to be completely reimagined to fit within the new, um, the new API uh, setup that, that Drupal 8 and 9 uh, bring to the table. Any other challenges that we might need to prepare for or might come across? Nothing that's Drupal specific, you know, that I can think of. Like everything we've, we've already mentioned, it's really just the, the modules, are they ready for nine? Uh, if they're not, it's not often, you know, if they're on eight, it's often a simple upgrade. Um, but yeah, it's just like anything you, you have to be planning, right? Like the, the success rate will improve as your planning increases. Yeah, this sounds like something I want, I want a team for. Uh, definitely that seven to eight or six to eight migration, absolutely. Um, for the eight to nine, probably not. Um, and this, I, I think, goes without saying for most folks, but um, make sure before you run those migrations uh, or before you run the upgrade from eight to nine that you do things like make a backup of your file system and your database. Uh, ideally, do that update uh, in a non-production environment. Um, lots of folks, especially we see this with WordPress, they turn on the automatic update function and just hope that everything is going to go well in production. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that can be risky. So just make sure that, you know, you're following those development best practices on doing this, you know, with backups, doing it uh, out of production space, just to make sure that, you know, when you do finally hit the go button, you don't inadvertently bring your site down or break something really important like your lead gen forms, your e-commerce functionality, and then you're kind of um, up a crick without a, a proverbial paddle, so. <laughs> Got it. So it sounds like, you know, there are some things I need to look out for, but with a few minutes left, I do want to end on a high note. So let's go back to what these exciting expanded functionalities might be. Um, you know, I've heard talk of richer media management, um, the content workflow we've already touched on a little bit, the um, improved mobile experience, responsiveness, and I've heard there's multilingual capabilities. Um, Megan, can you touch on some of those exciting things? Because I want to try to create some FOMO for people. Like, they want to be on the latest and greatest sure. platform. Yeah, actually, multilingual has always been a really strong point for Drupal. It was founded in, in Europe, where every site has to be multilingual in, in maybe three or four different languages. So it's always been really strong in Drupal core. Um, Leo Builder is one thing that's really exciting in, in Drupal now, and it's getting more and more robust and even better as, as it gets increasing adoption and increasing more and more developers working with it and trying to improve the user experience for, for content creators there. And, and Megan, what is Leo Builder? So it's a way of building landing pages with multiple sections and rows and columns. And it's a really innovative way of doing it. So instead of kind of picking a template where you have a set number of rows and columns and, and sections, you can just add a section, add a section. The section is going to have two columns or three columns. And is it going to be in a certain proportion? And you can continue to build a landing page that way by stacking sections. And this is really in line with the way we build landing pages now. And, and you'll see lots of landing pages around the web that are built that way. And it gives you a lot of flexibility in what you can put in those sections. And does the, does the content still stay like, you know, Drupal does structured content really mm -hmm. well. Um, what is the impact on that structured content when we think about something like Layout Builder? 
it's a different way of doing things. So it's a landing page and you're often pulling in other content from other places. So maybe you have two different blocks that are a call to action and then there might be a section that's a listing of news or blog postings. So you can really use this to create good landing pages like that. Um, certain things like structured content might still live in a separate content type with structured fields. So you can really mix and combine things in different ways to create these nice landing pages, but also keep your structured content that's search indexable and, and you can create automatic listings using views for that. Yeah, and that, that's the thing that I think really gets me excited about Layout Builder over you know WordPress, uh, WP Bakery, and some of those page building tools are really popular. Um, and, you know, we, of course, have things like Wix and Squarespace where you can just kind of drag those things out. But all of those really lose that structured content piece. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I think, you know, Layout Builder and Drupal really have the, the magic combo mm -hmm. where you can still leverage that structured content in other places. And thinking about the API, if you want to maybe serve that structured content out to a mobile, a mobile app or something, you still can while also getting the flexibility of that kind of drag and drop page builder uh, from some of those other platforms. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we didn't touch my, much on uh, big pipe, but you know, from seven to eight, that was a, a big performance improvement. You can cache, you know, separate parts of the page differently. And it's actually a, you know, a caching uh, library of algorithms uh, developed by Facebook. So, you know, that's a really important thing if you have an enterprise site or any site where performance is important. Like you think of a news site with different parts of the page updating at different times. That's, that's uh, definitely a big win for Drupal 8 that of course will be in 9 as well. Um, yeah, I think those are some of the highlights. Uh, Hadley, you're muted. You've <laughs> been live, right? So, Seth, do you kind of want to take us home here? If you were to be speaking to a client who was preparing for this migration and preparing for the, the latest and greatest version of Drupal, what would you really want them to know? Uh, you know, like I said, use it as a, a, a great opportunity all around for your business or organization to plan, do something great. And, you know, like Tyler, said, if it's eight, okay, just get it over to nine, you know, be smart about it, but the, the nine upgrade should be relatively trivial. Uh, but it's, it's really for those folks that are on seven, um, and, you know, just on six, uh, this, this is the time, right, to get over um, for the latest version. Right, and why not do it now when everything is going digital, as we know. Yeah. So all right. I think that was super helpful. And if anybody has any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to answer, give you some more information. Um, and we will be back on Tuesday, 12 o'clock.